It's the 1850s. The Fugitive Slave Act has just passed, and slavery is in full swing in America. And Harriet Tubman, born into slavery, is leading expeditions from the northern free states into the south, then rescuing enslaved people through covert missions back up north. It was known as the Underground Railroad, but it was neither an actual railroad nor was it underground. And while you may have learned about this northern route in school, there was an alternate route that enslaved people used to escape slavery many years before. Why was there a need for a southern route on the Underground Railroad? Well, the Southern Underground Railroad is something we knew very little about until recent times, and we're continuing to learn about it, and it's very exciting as an historian. A lot of slaves who lived in the far south, Georgia, for example, coming to Florida was a shorter, shorter route than trying to get all the way north to Ohio or to, to Canada. Florida's this no man's land. It's a refuge for Seminoles, enslaved people, people fleeing the law in the southern United States and elsewhere. Florida was a wild place. There was probably uh, very little policing, law enforcement in Florida. There were some old Indians in Florida, uh, and uh, black escaped slaves often joined with them and were helped along the way. And then there were Bahamians in Florida along this coastline, Bahamian fishermen. And often the slaves using the southern route would uh, be helped by Bahamian fishermen who would take them to the Bahamas and to freedom. We are right now seated just 50 miles from Bimini, which is part of the Bahamas, uh, not too much farther away from Andrus Island. I bring that up because Andrus was the, the key refuge for these enslaved people who made it across. One of the problems that uh, Southern planters had was that slaves who were so close to Florida, particularly in Florida, was under the control of the Spanish up until 1821, there was really no getting these slaves back. The Spanish welcomed them into Florida. They saw these escaped slaves from Georgia and the Carolinas as a bulwark against the Americans who were moving into this region and wanting to take control of Florida. For a Southern Underground Railroad to work, you needed assistance beyond the Spanish simply willing to permit escapees to pass through. While some indigenous tribes aided in the escape efforts of the Southern Railroad, Others sought to capture and return enslaved people in exchange for weapons and other forms of payment. You also needed navigational assistance and supplies. Florida was raw, undeveloped, but it did have various waterways and long unprotected coastlines. Along this path is where the enslaved blacks would be introduced to their most likely collaborators, Florida's black Seminole population. The black Seminoles were not uh, people who were racially mixed with the Indians. The black Seminoles were people who intermarried with the Seminoles or who camped or en encamped themselves near the Seminoles and then joined an alliance, an agreement with the Seminoles to fight whites coming into Florida, the army in particular, to remove the Indians from Florida. I think that eyewitness account says there were as many as 60 enslaved people and 60 black Seminoles who were grouped down here foraging for food waiting for whatever vessels might come from the Bahamas to rescue them and take them out of the United States. The nearly 500 mile journey to get to the southern tip of Florida and its many obstacles would prove to be just one part of this quest towards freedom. Once down here along Key Biscayne, escapees would have to coordinate the final leg of this arduous journey to get to places like the Bahamas. But why risk your life crossing the Atlantic Ocean after making it this far? The attraction for the Bahamas uh, and some other areas uh, was that they were under the control of the British and slavery had been abolished uh, in England. So blacks in this country saw England as the place of freedom because once you got there, you could not be enslaved. That was part of the appeal. We do have um, an account of some enslaved people getting into what today we would call a dugout canoe and somehow negotiating these waters, which is beyond me. Without any of the modern day tools of maritime navigation and with limited assistance, nearly 1,000 enslaved escapees braved these waters of the Atlantic in hopes of reaching the Caribbean islands. This Southern route was alive and well many decades prior to Harriet Tubman and the Northern Railroad movement. But whatever became of these escapees, once they reached this island of freedom, 
The place where most of the uh, escaped slaves settled in the Bahamas was called Red Bays. It's on Andros Island. It's the closest point of land between Key Biscayne and the Bahamas. A black Seminole community established itself at Red Bays. It still exists today. It's still unique. It's the most Africanized uh, settlement in the Bahamas today. The human quest for freedom is, is so strong that a human seeking freedom will try anything she or he can to gain freedom. And, and this is a great example, coming all the way down the center of this vast peninsula. I mean, it's so long, it's unreal. And then the final trek, somehow getting across these waters to a place that recognizes freedom and is not gonna send you back. This nearly impossible pathway to freedom came to an abrupt end once the U.S. purchased Florida from Spain in 1821. Florida quickly became a typical southern state that established a slavery-based economy, and the U.S. military was brought in to crack down on the escaped blacks here, along with their Native American collaborators. So Florida was, it was in a sense, an armed camp when we became a, a state. And the reason for that was to get the Indians out of Florida to recapture escaped slaves uh, and to have white domination of Florida become a reality. And it worked very well. Once it becomes American, that really means the end of this railroad. So it was long lived with very scanty numbers and we have just a bare bones understanding of it. But it's such an important chapter in our history. And you can see how different it is from the Northern Underground Railroad.